Educator.com. Today we're going to talk about the plasma membrane. And the plasma membrane is a structure that's common, that's found in both prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. And it's absolutely essential to the survival of both different kinds of cells. So basically, what is the function of the plasma membrane? There are several. Uh, the most important function is that the plasma membrane provides a barrier uh, between the inside of the cell and the outside of the cell. And as we've been seeing so far, it's important to maintain that barrier because uh, chemical reactions that are unique to the cell need to stay within the cell, as well as things like the DNA and the RNA. You don't want those escaping into the outside environment because then basically you don't have a cell anymore. Uh, the other thing that the membrane does is it regulates uh, the exchange with the environment. So based on how the membrane is arranged, uh, the you can have actual control over what enters and exits the cell, uh, including various ions, nutrients, cellular waste, uh, and protein uh, products, uh, hormones, uh, secretory products, things that are taken into the cell, uh, nutrition, uh, various chemicals. All of these things are important to survival of the cellular organism. So also the uh, membrane provides a way in which the cell can communicate with the environment. So there are various uh, what's called receptors on the uh, membrane that enable uh, proteins to uh, very uniquely uh, land on the membrane and signal the cell. Uh, and also there are various uh, unique identifiers that are contained in the membrane that distinguish uh, particular cells from other cells. The uh, other function that's very important is, of course, uh, structural support that uh, the membrane enables the cell to attach to other cells as well as provides a almost like a barrier or a... Uh, a, a shield even uh, against the outside world. So what is the chemical composition of the membrane? Uh, the membrane is composed of three groups of molecules, the lipids and the proteins and the carbohydrates. Now, most of the membrane is composed of lipid and we'll see uh, in the next slide exactly how that's arranged. So these lipids are uh, lipids that are attached to phosphates, uh, sphingolipids, and cholesterol. Now, uh, there are also embedded in the membrane uh, various types of protein. There is the integral uh, protein that uh, travels through the membrane from the outside to the inside of the cell and some of the proteins are actually anchored to lipids. Uh, there are peripheral proteins that are just attached to the outside of the cell. And then, of course, there are carbohydrates. There are various proteins attached to carbohydrates or the glycoproteins, and then carbohydrates attached to lipids uh, called glycolipids. So that word glyco, just so you know, that means carbohydrate. Okay, um, just to give you an idea, uh, the uh, lipids, uh, lipo, that certainly will tell you it's a lipid molecule attached to something, uh, and so forth. So we'll see various examples of those. Uh, so here is the lipid bilayer of the plasma membrane. And you can see what's called uh, these myceles, and you can actually make your own myceal. Uh, so when you, for instance, are, are making salad dressing, I, I don't know if you've tried making your own salad dressing, but often you need to mix uh, oil and water and vinegar together. And when you shake up the salad dressing, you'll see that uh, the oil will turn into a lot of those small uh, bubbles. Uh, and those bubbles are, are exactly like 
uh, my seals and the way that the lipid molecules arrange themselves they basically arrange themselves in a circular way and it forms almost like a bubble uh, and also you can have the uh, lipid molecules arrange themselves in what's called a bilayer so the outside of the cell if we think of this as a membrane is uh, the polar head of the lipid molecules and then the inside are also the the polar heads of the lipid molecules on the inside of the cell and that creates a very effective uh, barrier against the outside environment and this particular uh, arrangement is uh, found in liposomes where we have a uh, inner and an outer layer of these lipid molecules and inside of here we have an aqueous uh, cavity so if you think about uh, the days of the primordial soup uh, where we were evolving uh, where life was evolving one of the major uh, I guess it was like a, an accident but turned into a, a super advantage for these cells is when they acquired a, a mycelial like uh, outer covering so if you can imagine accidentally uh, genetic material finding its way inside one of these uh, lipid bubbles and then the actual lipid became uh, almost like a, a membrane a lipid bilayer and that was a revolutionary change uh, in biology and when we had these membranes evolve in that way uh, the cells gained two major advantages. Uh, the first advantage was the products of the genetic material could be contained within the cell and also the internal environment could be different from the external environment and what that means is, is basically chemically different than the outside environment. So for instance the inside of the cell could be more concentrated or even less concentrated depending on the environment that the cell is in based on the way in which that membrane uh, regulated itself. So that these cell membranes when they were acquired were very uh, advantageous and if we think about natural selection the cells that had these membranes were much better at survival than the cells that didn't have them and you know eventually we gave rise to an organism uh, like the modern uh, bacteria so here is an example uh, plasma membrane structure and you can see it's quite uh, a complicated um, uh, structure uh, and there are various components to the uh, layers so you can see over here here is our uh, two layers of lipid molecules and then we have a lot of things that are attached to the membrane uh, and we have channels so a protein channel is one of the types of integral proteins and you can see the obvious benefit to having these protein channels because they uh, directly allow things inside and out of the cell then we have various kinds of protein just sticking out of uh, one side of the uh, membrane globular protein and a glycoprotein now remember glyco is a carbohydrate attached to a protein and if you can imagine these uh, structures uh, I guess extending out from the membrane a lot of them serve a signaling function so it's almost like like having a um, like going fishing and you throw a line out into the water and that line has on the end a very uh, particular shape uh, that's a lot like what these um, uh, what they're called receptors and these signaling proteins do uh, on the outside of the cell then we have these cholesterol molecules and they're embedded in various parts of the membrane and remember well we'll talk about it in a minute but uh, uh, eukaryotic cells are the type of cells that have cholesterol prokaryotes don't have really have cholesterol 
And the cholesterol actually serves the function of dividing up these different sections of the uh, membrane. Uh, and then we have some membrane on the inside of the cell and they uh, serve various uh, roles as well. We'll see later on these different sort of proteins can form uh, various types of receptors. And then we have these longer types of protein that are also integral, but they don't form a channel. And sometimes what the type of role they serve is you can actually elicit a particular kind of reaction on one side of the molecule that then can travel down almost like a, a domino effect and then cause a reaction to occur inside the cell. So in brief, those are some of the structures of, that are found in a plasma membrane, and we'll certainly touch upon these structures uh, later on in the course. Uh, so there are various, again, differences, uh, even though both prokaryotes and eukaryotes have membranes, uh, they do have some variations. Uh, the eukaryotic cells have carbohydrates attached to proteins and lipids on the plasma membrane. We saw that in that uh, uh, structure on the previous slide. And these carbohydrates serve as attachment sites for bacteria. Now we're going to learn that not all bacteria are harmful, that sometimes the cell actually wants to attach to bacteria. But, you know, you, but if the bacteria are harmful by the cell knowing and, and w that the bacteria is in close proximity, uh, can launch various immune reactions, for instance. But these uh, eukaryotic cells that have these carbohydrates, these can also serve as receptor sites for cell-to-cell -cell, uh, interaction. Now, the eukaryotic cells, as I explained before, also contain these uh, sterols, of which cholesterol is uh, one of these sterols that really are embedded actually into the plasma membrane. Now the prokaryotes, the prokaryotes do not in general have um, cholesterol embedded in the membrane, but rather they have uh, membranes that are mostly phospholipid uh, and protein. Now, the first example is, why do you think eukaryotes have carbohydrates attached to their membranes? Well, we just uh, discussed it in the last slide. Number one is identification, okay? That having that unique uh, molecular pattern on the outside of the cell will facilitate the cell actually identifying other uh, protein molecules and other molecules outside of the cell. So for instance, if there's a particular molecule that signals the cell to do something, when that molecule lands on that receptor, then um, the cell can actually engage in some kind of process. So the second example is what is the function of having protein molecules connect the inside of the cell to the outside? Well, we just uh, recently, a uh, few slides ago, had that discussion. Uh, basically, if we attach the inside to the outside of the cell, we can have a channel. And we'll learn later on that those channels are very carefully regulated because obviously we don't want the gate for that channel to be open all the time because then potentially there wouldn't be any more cell left. So usually those protein channels are very carefully regulated and are opened and closed based on certain molecules uh, arriving on the scene or certain kinds of signals uh, going on. So the other function that I tried to explain, in fact, um, is, is also almost, if not as important as the protein channels are these protein receptors. And these receptors are very uniquely shaped to uh, have land on them. I guess they're configured in a way so that only one type of molecule uh, 
will uh, elicit a re uh, will be able to uh, land on the receptor and then cause a very characteristic uh, behavior of that cell once that happens. So this third example asks us which uh, membrane-based structure serves the role of identification. Well, we briefly discussed several of those, uh, but I, I would say the most important structure that serves that role is the protein receptor. And uh, we're going to learn uh, how specifically that protein receptor can be configured. So for instance, if we're thinking about uh, a particular protein that causes an immune reaction, that receptor is developed to only allow that particular protein to land on the receptor. It's shaped in a very complementary way. And once the protein lands on the receptor, we have a very characteristic type of biochemical or otherwise behavioral change that occurs in the cell. So that concludes our discussion. Thank you very much for visiting educator.com.